Hey everybody, this is Jason Akers again with Green Acres Pest Control. Uh, still trying to get set up for the stream. I always try to start an hour and it always takes me longer than an hour to get this thing going. Uh, you'll have to excuse me a little bit, I'm a little nasally. I've been still fighting the cold. It seems like no matter, uh, I get over a cold, I'm always sick by the time I do my live streams. <laughs> so, uh. Let me see, I want to be able to see when I am live, <laughs> which I know I'm live. There we go. All right. So today we're going to talk about, what was that? I think that was my phone to let me know that I'm live. Let's see. So hopefully, and there it goes again, hopefully this weekend, or this Friday night, we won't have an issue with my sound not working. So please let me know if you can hear me, if everything's working all right. Uh, if you can or can't hear me, let me know that the sound's all right, you can hear everything going on tonight. But uh, tonight I thought I'd touch on uh, a couple of things. <laughs> Hey, how are you tonight? I'm not going to try to pronounce your name, but I'm just going to call you D. Since you've got an apostrophe there, I'm going to call you D. <laughs> but uh, tonight I'm, I was going to uh, touch on a subject I've decided to do for my business. I, um, I've i had some issues lately where, and, and I hate to uh, talk about this on stream tonight, but uh, it's the first night I've decided to do it, actually, yesterday. But um, I've decided to start offering my services to uh, low-income families at no cost uh, so I can go in and try to help their bed bugs and, uh, you know, no little to no cost. I try to uh, – I'm already really, really, really inexpensive, and uh, it's still uh, more than they can afford for bed bug services. And so I've started to uh, offer it for free or uh, very low cost. And the way I'm able to do this is I uh, I started a Patreon server, and uh, or a server or a service or whatever. But it's linked on my uh, description and stuff like that. If anybody's willing to uh, donate to help the cause, but uh, anyway, I just wanted to ju throw that out there real quick and let everybody know I'm gonna release a video later on it. But uh, I don't like to ask for money, and uh, it's really the, all the money goes to just help uh, people in need who can't can't afford bed bug treatment. Uh, a lot of low-income families get bed bugs, and they uh, mainly because they buy uh, used beds, mattresses, box springs, uh, sofas, and things like that because all I can afford. So I'm uh, I'm gonna try to offer my services for free, and we're gonna see how it goes, and go out and try to kill bed bugs. But uh, anyway, so that's all. Just wanted to throw that out there real quick. So hey everybody, hey David, hey uh, I like I said I'm gonna call you D. <laughs> I don't want to try to pronounce your name. I'm just a redneck from Virginia. I can't pronounce uh, anything other than, you know, Anglo-Saxon. And I can't pronounce that either. <laughs> so, um, well, I don't really know a whole lot what to talk about tonight. I uh, kind of jumped on here. I've been uh, working all day today. Uh, Centricon. Let's see. That's a good, good, good. Start out with a question. Give me something to do. Let me look it up because I've never used it. Centricon, isn't that for termites? I think it's for termites. Yep, it's termite bait. Um, I don't use bait. Uh, I like Termidor. I mean, I've got a video about it. Um, the thing about baiting is it might be more, I think it's probably more successful with things like dry wood and, and maybe Formosan termites, but here where I live in Virginia, we deal with uh, eastern subterranean termites, and so it's just so easy just to use Termidor that, uh, I mean, it's 16-year residual, um, Unless you've got problems with, you know, water drainage or something like that, you're going to get a 16-year lifespan 
Uh, I've got 16 years on every job except for one that I've ever done. And the only one that I had to go back and do a retreat actually was three years later because they had a problem with um, water actually draining towards the house. Uh, they had a porch that was, it was level at one time and then it kind of settled right next to the house. And every time it would rain, the water would hit that lip and run down and go into the crack uh, next to the expansion joint where the porch was poured. That's the only problem that I've ever had with uh, uh, now I've lost my train of thought. But that's the only problem I've ever had where Terminators broke down. Uh, I went to an education class on pest control so I can keep my license. Yeah, I, I do that every other year. I have to because they make us uh, in Texas and several vendors are out there. A new Vendetta Nitro coming very soon. Vendetta is good. It is really good. I like Vendetta. I like Advion. Advion's good for roaches. Um, what is Vendetta Nitro? Is that for roaches too? All right, so you're asking about something that's good for bed bugs that's illegal? Illegal? Like against the law? <laughs> I I don't I don't I don't I don't understand. Uh Crossfire is legal and it's the best. Um I mean in my opinion, that's my opinion, but I use it all the time and I've never run across immune cock I've, I've never cut, run across an immune bed bug yet to, to crossfire. Uh, but I don't really know of much of anything good for bed bugs that's illegal that I would want to use. Um, you know, there's reasons things are illegal. The thing about bed bugs, if, if you're a pest control technician and you go in and you use things like Demon or uh, Bifenthrin, Calstar, or you know, something that is labeled for bed bugs, but you can't use it on the bed. And then you go spray the bed anyway. That's illegal as far as, you know, if you're a hired professional and you're going in and you're applying pesticide. Now, if you were a consumer and you don't have a license, you can use whatever you want on your bed. It's your bed. Uh, the label advises you not to. And so if you get sick, and then you sue the pest control company because you sprayed their chemical all over your bed and you got sick. Well, you're not going to win a lawsuit. You know, their insurance might settle out of court, but more than likely they won't and you'll lose. So, you know, if you use Crossfire, which is labeled for mattresses, and you use it on your mattress and you get sick, which is not going to happen. Maybe, but I doubt it. Uh you know, then you actually have a lawsuit on your hands because it actually states on the label that you could use it on the mattress, which is one of the only pesticides I know of that actually allows for broad use all over the entire mattress. Well, see, David, I don't know if I cannot remember because, you know, when you go to those things, those seminars, they, uh, I, I call them seminars where they have like people from Bear and, you know, all the different, you know, Syngenta and all the different corporations come out and they show you, well, this is what we've got here and this is what we've got there and all the different new things they got coming out. A couple years ago, and you can, uh, do I use Univar or Target? I'm not sure. I'll get to your question in a minute, Greg. But um, I wanted to ask David something. But there's a bait out that you can use for German cockroaches that uh, – no, actually it's for ants. It's an ant bait that you can use where – because, see, what ants do is they take the bait back. They feed it to the reproductives. The reproductives die. But what a lot of people don't understand about ants is the reproductives actually turn – the food they're fed, the feces that they produce, is what the workers eat. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people think, well, if ants get into sugar, they must be eating it themselves. Actually, they take it back. They feed it to the reproductives. The reproductives turn around and feed it back to the workers. There's a bait out now on ants where the workers take it back. They feed it to the reproductives. Then the reproductives, their poop, which is what the workers eat, 
is actually poisoned, so it kills the workers as well. One of the biggest problems they've been having with baiting for ants is that the ants kill the workers, the workers die. The workers, I mean, not the workers, but the reproductives die, then the ants are like, oh, this is killing, this is killing reproductives. And then they go back and they'll mark the bait and they won't go after it anymore. So this is what I'm wondering if you if you know which chemical that is, because I'd like to get some of that bait, because I, I cannot remember for the life of me what that guy, I tried to get a hold of him before we left, but you know how those things are when you go in there and they've got everybody's at the table and you just don't have time to sit there and wait through 20 different people trying to talk to one guy. But if you if you happen to know what that's called, I cannot remember for the life of me, or if anybody knows that chemical. But um, Univar is a, I thought Univar was a, uh, aren't they a, a distributor? Yeah, they're a distributor. Yeah, they're they're a distributor. I use uh I don't use Univar, I don't use Resident. Um and my daughter is watching T V with a headset on, so she doesn't interrupt my she is laughing at something that's great over there. Alright, David. Um something that you could buy in Mexico to kill bed bugs. You know, honestly I don't know. I think did I I don't know if I talked to you on the phone the other day or not. I think you might have called me on the phone. Somebody lived next to Mexico and called me on the phone the other day and was asking the same question and I don't honestly know of anything that you could buy over the border that's legal. Uh that's illegal that would work on bed bugs. The problem is is this All right. Durasban is something that you used to be able to use around inside your home. Uh inside outside, it's illegal now. It's against the law. Uh, to use it inside the home. Now, they still have it. You could still buy it to use in, like, agricultural. It's restricted use, the same as uh, diazinon, or both restricted use. But the problem is, is that it causes birth defects in babies. They uh, they linked it to, uh, like, mental retardation and things like that in, in babies, in pregnant mothers that are, that are uh, you know, exposed to it. And so they stopped using it indoors. Um, there was a little bit of, uh, of, of controversy over the chemical, and so they just quit using it. They took the label and uh, made it restricted use so you couldn't buy it unless you had a license. You can still buy it if you work in agriculture, but there's things like that that you just you don't want to risk. If, if there are things in this country that you can buy that work, buy what works, and it's safe. You know, at least it's safe for right now. <laughs> I mean, I say that everybody thought Durasban was safe until the studies that linked it to, you know, like I said, birth defects and and problems with pregnant women and things like that. So they then they decided to outlaw it. But as science progresses and things get more advanced, we may discover that the chemicals we're using today are, you know, cause problems. You don't really know. You're just you're trying to deal the best you can with the bug problems you have and eliminate the problems that you've got without making yourself sick. So. But yeah, I remember talking to you on the phone, and, and I didn't. I, I still, like I said, there are chemicals you can get over the border. Um, I know the number one chemical black marketed over the border from Mexico is fluoridane, and the main reason is because it can last fifty years for termites. Um, it's a really stable chemical, but they also link chloridane to cancer uh, and different things. And so, you know, you just you don't want to take a risk. It's not worth the risk. You know, it's like, let's say you save a thousand dollars treating your home for termites with chloridane, but then you end up developing cancer and dying at, you know, 57, 60 years old. Was it really worth it? I mean, how many years did you cut off your life by developing cancer? So you got to understand that there's a lot of things they do down in Mexico where they spray, you know, they still spray strawberry fields and stuff like that with chloridane, Durasban, Diazon. They sell the strawberries to us. We eat them. So, you know, the chemical may not be that harmful, but then it may be. You just don't know. But the, the, the links here, the studies that were done here in lab results did link those certain chemicals to, like I said, birth defects, cancer, um, and you don't want to risk that. Of course, they sell cigarettes here too, and they cause cancer. 
you know, the same person will sit there and they'll tell you about how they don't want chemicals sprayed around their kids at the daycare and then they'll be puffing away on a cigarette or a vape. You know, <laughs> nicotine is, is harmful. You know, and now they've got these studies that link vapes to uh, just as much cancer causing problems as actually cigarettes themselves, if not more so. So, you know, you can't you can't be afraid to, you know, you got to get rid of the bugs. You can't have bugs living around you. You can't have, uh, you know, like I, I had a customer one time who uh, he was from India and he was actually religious. Uh, I think I've talked about this before on, on one of my videos, but he was extreme devout Hindu and they don't believe in killing anything. I mean, you're going to hell if you step on a cockroach, you're you're in deep trouble. And he he was out of town visiting family in India and his wife called and she was just all distraught, all upset, said that she had uh, a rat in the house and she had to get rid of the rats in the house and the house was infested with rats. And uh, I went out there, it was in the middle of town where the you know, the rats are coming up out of the sewers and everything, they're all over the place. And I went out there and uh, she's like, I'm just going to pay you cash. I don't want a trail. I don't want a ticket. I don't want a you know, receipt or anything because my husband comes back in a week. But I've got to get these things out of the house. I don't want the bubonic plague in my house. I don't want to get sick. And so, you know, I, I said, all right, well, all right, I'll go ahead and get rid of them for you. So I baited the house and everything and used some bait stations around and all that. And she's like, you know, I said, but, you know, these bait stations, you don't want them out either, do you? Because if he comes in here through these bait stations, he's going to know that you, that you paid for pest control. And so she's like, nah, I'll just take them and chuck them or whatever. I said, well, you got to be careful. they got poison in them. So, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I've, I've, what is that? I'm not sure what that is. So I'm going to look that up real quick. I'm going to write that down. C -L I am not going to pronounce that. C-H-I-A-N. D I N. It is an insecticide developed. Let's see. It's a bear chemical. All right. Oh, it's a neonicotinoid. That's why. Neonics are amazing. They really are. They're talking about outlawing them. Oh, it has like, Nygard and stuff in there too. Nygard's pretty good. It is expensive. It's so expensive. But it's it's good. It's good on fleas too, if you need to do a flea treatment. Nygard's good on fleas. Oh yeah, you you know the thing is the label's for spraying on baseboards. You know? It uh that that's one of the things that they'll tell you when you go to uh these you know, you're you're going and you're sitting there through these classes and stuff that you have to take in order to keep your license and you're treating baseboards the label specifically states right on the label you can spray baseboards, that you're supposed to spray baseboards. It's crack and crevice treatment. You treat the baseboards around the house. I do it all day, every day. And they, and then they'll sit right there and they'll tell you you need to obey your label. And don't be spraying a whole lot of chemical around because you got might get a lawsuit. But the label says that you're supposed to spray the baseboards. If you're going to do your job right, you need to spray the baseboard. That's like saying... I want to, uh, like, I, I was I was uh, moving furniture today for my wife. I, I put in a new new bedroom suit in the bed, in the bedroom, and I put together a bed. It's like saying that you get the you get the instructions to put the bed together, but then you put the bed together without any screws. It's like nothing's going to work. You know, you need to do what the label says to do. If it says that you know to spray for cockroaches, you need to treat the cracks and crevices. Well, you need to treat the cracks and crevices with the chemical. Otherwise, you're not going to get rid of your cockroaches. So, uh. But yeah, I use Vendetta Plus. It's good. I do have to switch around, though, every now and then. Uh, I found that Vendetta, uh, it doesn't work all the time. I found that there are some instances where I've got chemical-resistant cockroaches to Vendetta. They're eating the bait, but it's not killing them. So I have to rotate my baits. And that's where I say I use Advion, too, so I can kind of rotate my baits around and not use the same thing every time. So, same as my same as my liquid pesticide. It's like when Max Force first came out. Max Force was amazing for cockroaches. I mean, it was a godsend. And for three or four years, it's all you really needed to use to get rid of cockroaches. But now, with Pipronil, everybody's using Pipronil for termites and mixing it in their tanks and using it illegally. There was a bunch of lawsuits up in Indiana not too long ago where a company was using it everywhere, you know, for even ants and everything inside where it wasn't even supposed to be used. 
and uh, but yeah, they they develop chemical immune cockroaches to fipronil now. No, I don't know. I, I they make different types of dusters, uh, frugal. They make different types of dusters. So you can get like a bulb duster, you can get a bellows duster, and each one of them has a different type of tip. I don't know if they use, if they make different tips, but the problem is the dust, if you get anything smaller, if you're wanting a smaller tip, it's just going to clog up right away the first time you try to use it. So you want you want a pretty good sized tip on the end so that when the dust comes out, it actually comes out and not clogs up. Does Alpine make a dust? Does the uh, bait now? Oh, they do. Oh, wait, I've tried that. I've used that before. It's been a long time, but I've used that. The Alpine's pretty good, too. I'm sorry. I'm exhausted tonight. <laughs> what's, the, oh, what's the best product for stink bugs? Actually... Cypromethrin is really good for stink bugs. They make a uh, cypher, I think is what they call it. Uh, anyway, Cypromethrin Demon is a name brand for for stink bugs. Um, they actually make one for stink bugs. It's a little vial. It's I think it's exactly one ounce, one full ounce of uh, cypromethrin, and you take that one vial and it makes a gallon's worth of, like I said, finished product, which is cypromethrin, and uh, it's actually labeled to use for stink bugs. They've got it at the farm store right across the street. So it's really expensive buying it that way, but you're buying the label. You know, I'm not sure if actually Demon even has it on the label. Let me see, Demon. Uh, Max. Let me look it up real quick and I'll tell you. But that's, it, it works really good for stink bugs. But the thing is, during the stink bug season, you can treat for uh, cluster flies and everything, and it's going to kill the stink bugs too. So, because every, all the stuff, I mean, during the stink bug season, you've got three different things that are, well, four, four different things that are coming in the house. You've got stink bugs, uh, cluster flies, ladybugs, and wasps. All four of those things are coming in at the same time. So if you treat for, you know, if you're treating for things like cluster flies, it's going to kill the stink bugs too. Um, and I know for a fact that it's labeled for cluster flies. Because I use it for cluster flies all the time. In fact, I've got a house up in northern, uh, up in Charlottesville that I do for, for cluster flies with cypromethrin. I just did it the other day. <laughs> Uh, yeah, see, stink bugs, I don't even think is even on the label. No, it's not. Stink bugs aren't on the label. So you can't treat for stink bugs. You have to treat for cluster flies, like I said. So, if you're curious. Unless they've changed the label since this one. Yeah, see, flies, right there. You could treat for flies. With, uh, yeah, but that works really well. <laughs> so any questions tonight? <laughs> can I carry? Oh, yeah, you can. No, I don't carry a rig. Like, you talk about, like, a termite rig? No, I don't carry that in my car. I've got another vehicle for termites. But um, my car, I can use the car for pest control. No problem. I actually have, in the back, I have a toolbox, a closed toolbox. And uh, that's what I carry all my pesticides in. So they're not actually exposed in the compartment. And the guy, actually, it was funny because the guy came out to inspect him because, you know, they have to do that. The Department of Agriculture is who inspects in Virginia. And so he came by and he actually took a look at the back of my car. He, he kind of was wondering how I was working out of my car. 
and he came out because it doesn't have a trunk. A Kia Soul doesn't have a trunk. It's it's a hatchback, and I opened the hatchback and it's like you know it's a big toolbox in the back with the closed lid with locks on it and everything. He's like, wow, that's great, that's wonderful. Yeah, you could work out of that, no problem, because it's closed. In fact, if I park this car, as long as that's the only chemicals I have as far as chemical storage. I could park the car anywhere. I don't even have to have a sign on the building or anything stating that it's chemical storage at all because it's a separate vehicle that's actually keeping all the chemical storage in it. So when, as long as I pull it into the garage and I park it in the garage, I don't even have to have a sign on the garage stating that it's used for chemical storage because it's in my car. So, but yeah, I do have uh, I do have a rig though for termite work, and that's in a separate vehicle, so that I can do termite work. If that's what you're asking, Greg, I'm just assuming that the, the rig question was about termite rigs. Because that's, I mean, in this field, I mean, you ask if someone has a rig, that's the, that's that's all I I'll, that's all I think about is termites. So, uh, I'm sorry, I don't have a whole lot to talk about tonight. I really didn't prepare anything for tonight. I was uh, wanting to talk about my uh, Patreon server that I started up because I'm trying to help low-income families be able to afford, uh, afford bed bug treatments. And uh, I've actually got one guy I'm doing Monday free. I'm just going to his house and treating for free, taking it out of my own pocket. But, uh... So yeah, I started up a Patreon server because I, I wanted to try to help people take care of uh, their bed bugs and stuff like that. Because here in Virginia, they've become really a serious problem, and a lot of people just can't afford to take care of it. What's best for flies? Poop. Flies love poop. But if you're talking about killing flies, uh, are you talking about like inside? If you're talking about flies that are inside, then you can use lures, you can use, uh, you know, it just depends on the pesticide. Just about any pesticide will kill flies. They're really easy to kill. Um, for ants, phantom. I would use phantom for ants. Phantom is really good for ants. I have really, really good results with phantom on ants. That's that's a, my go-to chemical for ants is phantom. It's uh, it's expensive, but it it works. Not as expensive as Crossfire, but it, it really does work well on ants. And I don't do power spraying, but um, I do a lot of granules and stuff like that for ants around the outside. But yeah, phantom is really good on ants. I don't know what tawny ants are. We get a lot of odor odorous house ants as far as indoor. We get pharaoh ants, uh, acrobat ants, uh, of course your standard carpenter ants. Those are mostly all that bother people here. Um, and phantom works really good on all of those. So I don't really have a problem. And as far as outside treatment, you could basically use anything outside. The, the biggest problem about out ants coming from outside is locating the nest. I had a kid one time, and, and talking to kids helps. I had a, a customer one time whose little boy, he was probably five. He wasn't school age. He was right at that age where he could start going to kindergarten. And I went, and he's talking to me because kids always talk to you. And so he's asking me. He's like, uh, I was ask him. I said, well, have you seen any ants? And he said, oh, yeah, I know where they are, and walked all the way down the whole property. It was like two acres away. There was a creek in the back of the property where an old rotten tree had fallen down over the creek and the ants were coming out of a stump and they were going all the way up. And I treated that stump and the ants disappeared. So, you know, finding the source of the problem is the biggest issue with ants on the outside. Um, I use cypermethin. He's a crazy ant. Yeah, cypermethin. That's a good chemical for ants. The problem with cypermethin is the, the biggest problem with cypermethrin and ants is cypermethrin is a synthetic corrigroid and the ants recognize it as a pesticide. And so if you hit near a nest and you don't hit directly in the nest, 
they'll recognize it for what it is, and it can cause the ant colony to split and divide if they're in the house. And so I have a lot of problem with that with cypromethrin, which is why I, I try not to use a lot of synthetic pyrethroids around ants. I used to use bifenthrin for ants, but then, uh, honestly, I think it caused more problems than good. I, I really do. I think it caused them to split really bad. And uh, I was having really good results with it for a little while, and then it just quit working. And I just, I just quit using it altogether. But yeah, we get little ants everywhere. I'm not sure what tawny uh, difference between, I don't know. I have to look up stuff. Oh, I see. Crazy ants. Yeah, I don't think we have those here. I don't think we have those here at all. I've never heard of them. That's the first time I've ever heard of them. That just shows the difference, you know, with all the different areas if you live in the United States. People have problems with all kinds of different bugs. Uh, scorpions. Actually, I have a, a customer down in South Boston who actually does get scorpions in his house. When I used to, when I took the test for when I was I was like seventeen when I got my license in pest control, and uh, when I did the uh, when I took the test for um, my license, they talked about scorpions on the test. I have never ever seen a scorpion unless it was in a cage. I've never seen a scorpion. But they have those things all over Virginia, apparently. I've just never seen one in 30 years. How do you control Asian lady beetles? Um, you could treat them like you do cluster flies, and it'll stop Asian lady beetles. They're really easy to get rid of. They die. They, it doesn't stop them from coming in, but they just die in piles everywhere. You just sweep them up and throw them outside, and they're gone. That's the same with stink bugs, though, and cluster flies. You know, the thing is, if you've got an insect that invades through the winter— they're going to still invade no matter what you spray because it's still survival. They're still coming in because they need to survive. They're trying to get out of the cold. And so they're going to continue to come in no matter what you put in their way, no matter what kind of barrier you try to produce around the outside. And when they travel through it, they'll just die in the house. So you'll have them die in piles everywhere. And you just explain to your customer, you know, there's nothing I can do to stop them from coming in, but I can stop them from flying around in the house. They'll get in, and they'll die in the tracks of your sliding door. They'll die in little piles in front of your windows and stuff, in the cracks and stuff where you spray. They'll die there. And then all you have to do is just go back and sweep them up. I used to have a customer who would get five-gallon buckets of ladybugs about once a week. She would empty a five-gallon pail full of them that they would collect in her windows. So, yeah, that they're not hard to kill at all. Ladybugs have been a problem, though, since what? Let's see, 20, 21, 22 years now since they released those things. I don't know where you live, Cameron, but I know that when they uh, when they started releasing them here, I was 15 years old, 14, 15 years old, and they released them all the way up the Appalachian Mountains, all the way up into New York. And so now they're you know they're all over the place. This is the first year they've really swarmed in this part of Virginia, probably in 12 years. But they used to swarm every year religiously. After that very first frost date, ladybugs swarm every year. So, but they don't swarm near as bad as they used to. They don't have a natural predator. That's why they they breed out of control because they don't really have a natural predator in the area, and they were because they were shipped in from another country. Yeah, those are odorous house ants, aren't they, Frugal? The ones that when you you squish them and they smell funny, they smell really, I mean, they're obviously stink. They, they have really weird smell to them. Those are odorous house ants. But they're really difficult to get rid of. You have to, I mean, like I said, the only thing that I've found that has worked really well on odorous house ants is uh, phantom. And it works, it works really good. It'll work for 90 days on ants. It's the only thing I've ever used that has actually lasted that long on ants, and that's in my own house. Now, as soon as it gets warm, here we're on February now, about the end of February to the beginning of March, I'll start getting odorous house ants in the house. And if I treat with phantom, I don't have them. I won't have them all through the summer because you treat at the right time, you don't have them. So, but like I said, phantom's expensive, and a lot of exterminators don't use it. Uh, they might use it for cockroaches. It works good on cockroaches too, but it's more one of those you don't want to. You don't expect knockdown from Phantom. You expect you have to use it 
typically after your first couple cleanouts, you may have one, two cleanouts with cockroaches, and then after the third, fourth treatment, then you might want to use Phantom. But it's going to take longer, so you don't want to use it right away because it takes a, a bug like, what is it, like three or four days to die after they crawl through Phantom. They don't die right away. And the customer wants to see, if, they, if you've got roaches in a house, the customer wants to see thousands of dead roaches. They don't want to see roaches still crawling around half out of their mind because they're drugged by a chemical. They want them dead. And so I usually wait until about the third or fourth trip with cockroaches before I use Phantom. But yeah, they, they do. They smell really weird. It's, it, that's why they call them odorous house ants, because they have a really weird smell. What do I, I sell? Do you sell to your customers also? You mean like, do I sell pesticide? I don't sell pesticides to my customers. I don't deal with retail. I sell my services. I sell myself. <laughs> I'm a hooker. No, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> Just started using I don't have, we don't have American roaches hardly at all here. American roaches like a uh, really uh, hot, humid environment, and, and we just don't get them here. Um, there's a couple of schools, one school that I was thinking of that I that uh, my dad used to work for, because uh, my dad started his company in 85, and I worked for him. That's where I got all of my training. But um, he used to do this school where, where every one of the dorms, it was, a, it was a college, every one of the dorms was heated with a boiler system. So the boiler had these big, huge, like, duct pipes that would go underground, and would there was, like, tunnels that would connect each one of the dormitories, and they had these big, huge steam vents, and the steam vents would get infested with American cockroaches. And I have only ever ran into an infestation of American cockroaches once, and that was in a basement of a uh, restaurant, and the reason the restaurant was getting the American cockroaches is because it was really hot and humid in the basement. They had a problem with the water heater leaking, and the uh, the basement floor was gravel. It wasn't actually like a, a cement floor. It was gravel. And so you had, not only did you have a, a, a leaky water heater, but you also had moisture coming up from the soil. And so it was just really humid and, and, and hot in that basement. And they had really bad problems with American cockroaches in the basement. But I was able to eliminate the American cockroaches with just cyberpethrin. That's all I needed to use. They're real. See, they don't have immunity. The thing about American cockroaches here, anyway, I don't know about down in Texas, but here in Virginia, because we don't see them very often, they don't. They aren't really immune to anything here. And so you could use just about any pesticide on them, and they die. They just die. Just like Oriental cockroaches. Oriental cockroaches, because they come from outside, and uh, they they don't actually live like with German roaches. The biggest issue with German roaches is German roaches in Virginia, they can't survive. Like outside now, it's 30 degrees. It's actually 20 degrees outside right now. German roaches die in that type of temperature. It's too cold to for them to survive. Now, the eggs will survive, but the adults will die. So what happens is the uh, because they're inside all the time, they're around chemicals all the time. Because if you see roaches, you spray for them. And people go out. Home Depot or, you know, Dollar General, and they buy whatever they can afford. They come in their house and they spray it around. It's it's half the strength of what it should be labeled for, and then they end up developing immunity to pesticide. And so then you're going in, you're spraying for German roaches, and you don't know what's, what's been used on them, what they're immune to, what they're not immune to. But every other species of roach, Oriental, uh, that we have here. Now, we only have Oriental, German, let me see, brown-banded German roaches, which are basically almost identical with the way they behave, but German roaches, brown-banded roaches, uh, American, Oriental, and Pennsylvania wood roach. That's all we have. That's it. And so all of those breeds, except for Germans and brown bandits, they're not immune to anything. So you can use any chemical on them and they all die. I just, we don't have any problem with immunity issues with any other roach here. We don't get palmetto bugs, you know, we don't get, you know, we don't get a lot of the things you get further south. In Virginia. <laughs> I've heard good things about Suspend. I think tonight is just, uh, seems to be just a night where a bunch of pest control guys sitting around talking about bugs and killing bugs. 
<laughs> not really having too many questions tonight. Oh, that's Cyfluthrin. Is that what Psychic is? Cyfluthrin? That's good. That's really good. Cyfluthrin is really good. If that's, I, I can't read the label. I'm trying to read the label. And it's one of those like zoom in pictures and I can't tell what it is. <laughs> but yeah, Cyfluthrin, Cyfluthrin is really good. Really good. Here we go. Yeah, Cyflu yeah, that's good stuff. That's really good stuff. If you're asking about Psychic, it's good. I've used it. I've used it. It's really good. Oh, and Suspend, that's just, is that, that's uh, a metaclopper, isn't it? Oh, it's Delta Methan. I hate that. I don't, I don't like Delta Methan. I've never liked Delta Methan. They, uh, I don't know, what was that chemical? It was Delta Methan that was the active ingredient, but that stuff was like soup. I mean, it was thick. It was like creamy crap, and it was awful. It might have been Suspend, but I didn't like it. I don't like Suspend because I don't like Delta Methan. I've, I've never had good results with Delta Methan. It's all right on ants around the outside, but that's about, I mean, I, I've never had good good results with it. Oh, thanks, David. I appreciate it. <laughs> now, that's $4 you done paid me in the last two weeks, David. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. I've actually decided to take any anything I make on YouTube for my videos and stuff and all the stuff that I use on my Patreon server and everything, and I'm taking it all, and I'm donating it to, uh, to needy families to help them deal with their bed bug problems. So when people call me and they have bed bugs and they, you know, they're like in lower income housing or something like that, I'll just go out there and I take everything that I make on YouTube and I put it all toward their bill so I can give them, you know, affordable rates and actually do a decent job for them because the pest control guys locally here suck. I mean, that's, that not everybody, not everybody, but a lot of them are awful. They're, they're really just, they take advantage of people and uh, so that they can get decent pest control. I don't trust anybody. I have trust issues. So it, it, just so you guys know, that's what I do. If I make anything on my YouTube or anything at all, I always take it all and I put it towards charity. So I just, anyway, not to pat, I ain't patting myself on the back because that's not the kind of person I am. Hey, I just had a post on my YouTube. Uh, what is this? Mark King, not with you guys though, but uh, somebody just posted, what is that video? I think it's my Diet Spacious Earth video. Oh yeah, yeah, I still have to pay for everything. Yeah, and, and, and I, use, I use the best, I use uh, Crossfire. I, I think it's the best, that's my personal opinion, but, um, or Alpine, Alpine or Crossfire just depends on, on the issue. But, uh, yeah, I pay for the chemical. I pay for the gas, too. I pay for the, you know, my business pays for, my, I do mileage deductions. And this year, what is it, 54, I think it's 54 cents a gallon. I mean, 54 cents a mile that I have to, that the company has to reimburse. And so I take all that. I just pay for gas and everything. I do it all. I don't care. You know, I can, I can, I can help people out where I can. Like I said, I got a Monday job I'm doing for free. So, and next month, I, I told him, he called up, and I said, I'll, do, I'll give him two treatments. I'll come out this this next week, and, and then I'll do it again in another month and go out again. But he's like an hour away, hour and a half away. So, one way. But I don't care. You know, I've tried to help the guy out. He's He needs it. He needs it. He's a veteran, and uh, he's disabled. So, I, I'll take care of my veterans. <laughs> I think more people should. <laughs> so... But anyway, I, I, I don't know. It's weird asking for money, you know? And, and I, I started the Patreon yesterday. I made the Patreon yesterday because I, I called and talked to him about it. And I said, you know, this is what I, I'm going to do this. I'm going to talk about it on my live stream. I might make a video on my, on my channel about it. I said, but uh, I ain't one to ask people for money. You know, if I can afford to help you out, I'll do it. And I'll just do it to help you. So 
but so far he's the only one. But I did have a lady that called me a couple days ago, but I hadn't heard back from her yet. So she probably found she probably got a landlord to finally deal to it because I told her the landlord what happened in her specific instance was she was living she had just moved in the house and and only been there for three months. No, I don't, Greg. Uh, I don't like bedlam. But uh, three months, she had no bed bugs. And as soon as she moved in, for the last three months, she's been fighting bed bugs. People that moved out had them. And uh, the landlord won't, I mean, it's blaming her. And she's, of course, she's got, it's still a he said, she said. You don't know if she had them when she moved in or if she, you know, or if the house had them before she moved in. You don't really know. You're just taking her word for it. And, of course, she's going to tell you that she's never had them. So you don't know. But I told her, I said, the best way to prove whether or not you've got bed bugs is to, uh, you know, clear it. Have it cleared by, like, a dog or have somebody go in and, and inspect it with, you know, before you move in. And then they can clear it or not. And then you know if it's got bed bugs or not. That way you can go to the landlord and you can say, no, look, it did have bed bugs. Or it did not have bed bugs, you know. I, I charge for follow-ups on cockroaches, David, to answer your question. Um, I always, I treat, I do an initial, I, uh, I do six months for cockro German cockroaches. I do six months. Um, I can get rid of them quicker, but I usually recommend six months because you don't know how bad they are when you get there. Yeah, you go into a house and the roaches are so bad, after you're leaving, they're falling on you. You're pulling them out of your shirt pocket. You know, they're crawling all over your hat and everything, and they're just everywhere. You know you're not going to be able to get rid of a roach infestation like that really fast. Uh, I actually had one house that I was doing for four months in a row, and the roaches, it didn't seem like they were dying at all. Come to find out that every single day, right after I would leave, the woman would go behind me and wash counters with bleach. She'd go and scrub it. everything that I was using. She was taking up all the all the residual and everything. She was doing inside the cabinets and everything. Because I come in there, and it was like, it was always around noon-ish when I would get to the house. And I was running a little late this month. It was like in the summer. And some of my customers earlier before her had some problems. So it took me a little bit longer to get to her house. And when I got there, the lady's like, Oh, man, my kids are getting ready to get off the bus. They hate it when I use bleach. And I'm like, what do you mean? And she's like, oh, yeah, every time you come, I come in here and I scrub up everything with bleach. I know that bleach will kill them roaches. And I said, well, you can't use bleach. I said, bleach eliminates pesticide. I said, it will absolutely eliminate the pesticide. You can't be cleaning up the chemical. You've got to leave the chemical there. It's a residual, which means it stays there as long as you don't clean it up. And it'll kill roaches. And she's like, oh, well, I didn't know that. Well, no wonder the roaches weren't dying, you know, because she's cleaning up everything I was using. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. I don't like telling people to pour bleach down their drains, especially if we're on a septic system. Out here, a lot of people have septic tanks. I don't live uh, in the city. And so a lot of people out here have septic tanks. And they'll, they'll ruin their septic tank because they make a practice of pouring bleach down the drain. But, uh, but yeah, I always tell people six months on German cockroaches, and uh, that's what they expect, you know. And roaches aren't easy. Bed bugs are way harder than roaches. I'll, I'll give you that, you know. But I've thought about it, but a lot of times with German roaches, you're dealing with people that won't, that won't work with you, you know, when it comes to people. It doesn't matter who you are. I have never run into a single person that won't work with you on bed bugs. But I have run into some stubborn people when it comes to roaches. You know, you go out and you may do a house for two or three months and the roaches are almost dead. And if they had you come for a couple more months in a row, they'd be gone. And they will lock you out of the house. They'll pretend like they're not home. They'll have little kids looking out through the blinds, peeking at you. And the landlord's paying for it. And so they're like, well, I don't care if he comes in here or not. I don't feel like letting the bug man in today. And then you'll come in and you, you don't do it. You can't get in, so you don't do it. And then the next month when you come, the roaches are everywhere all over again. And it's like you were never there. 
because they just did not, you know. And so I, I don't. When it comes to cockroaches, I'm, I'm very leery about giving away free work on roaches, just because people don't, they don't, they don't do what they're supposed to do. So, you know, that's just me, personally. But I've thought about it. Oh, I, I, yeah, I like doing German roaches though. I, I enjoy. I, I think the most fun thing that I deal with though are yellow jackets. Just because I'm now I do I have a how a how it uh, how to kill uh, yellow jackets on my channel too but uh, with dust I use a duster with those too and uh, that's probably the most fun just because you go out there and they're terrified you know they don't like to go in and put their hand they, there's no way they're going to get as close as I have to get to a yellow jacket nest if they're in the ground and you take that little duster and you got that little wand about that long. And you're sticking that duster in that hole, and you're puffing it full of pesticide dust, and you get out of there, and you never get stung, and they're like, I can't believe you did that. You're crazy. So, you know what? I just realized I don't have my headset plugged in. I bet my sound is awful. I, I am wearing this thing. I look like a fool. And this it ain't even plugged in. What? I don't see how they're hearing me. I guess it's because of the microphone on my camera. Maybe. Well... This is two weeks in a row. I'm going to blame it on the sickness. That's what I'm going to blame it on. Looking like a fool sitting here with my headset. I don't know. I'm going to have to wear it. I'll take it off. Now that I've got the microphone set up this way, I ain't going to mess with it. Bird mites are awful, Westwood. The worst infestation of bird mites. I had a customer one time that I had to do an exclusion for because I'm a trapper too. And they had starlings. What happened was there was a bathroom. It was two bathrooms in a warehouse type setup. And the exhaust fans would where they were connected to the same vent. So they went up, they were connected and then it took it out to a uh an exhaust outside. The birds had pushed the screen in on the exhaust fan on the outside and were living on top of it. Every time they turned the fan on, it would stir those dust mites up and blow them down on people while they were sitting on the toilet. And they would start itching like crazy from the bird mites falling all over top of them. And you can't see them. And so, uh, I mean, you can, but they're just, they're so tiny. Once they get on you, you can't find them. And uh, I had to get rid of, the, the birds died inside this exhaust vent. And I had to go out there and remove that that nest of dead birds. And those I got the bird mites all in my truck. They were all over me. I was itching for weeks. It was miserable. I had to treat my truck. I went straight home. I took a shower. The only time I got relief was when I would take a shower and wash them off of me. But as soon as I go back out and get in my truck, they were right back there again, right back on me again. It was miserable. I hate, hate bird mites. They are awful because you can't see them. You can't get them off of you. It looks clean. The truck was clean. You, you couldn't find them. But after about two or three weeks, they all died. And then I didn't have them in the truck anymore. But it was absolutely miserable. Absolutely miserable. So, here, let me, let me do this. Yeah, you, uh, you guys got to let me know it. My microphone is really, really quiet. I'm stupid. You know, I do stupid stuff all the time. Last week, I was on for 40 minutes, and I wouldn't even, my mic was muted and everything, and I was playing a game with my wife, didn't even know I had pushed the button to, to stream. So, you know, that's two weeks in a row I've done something stupid. So you've got to, you got to tell me, hey, man, I can't hear you, and I'll fix my mic. So. Uh, it was fun killing German roaches when I used to spray them. Zim Zimprox is good on roaches, too. Uh, the thing about Zimprox, I think Zimprox is more like, it's like a catalyst, because you have to add it to certain pesticides, and it makes them kill roaches, where even when the roaches were immune to it, they're dying from it again. So I really like Zimprox. It is really good for German cockroaches. I do use that for German roaches. All the time. Great stuff. Uh, now, I don't really use... The only IGR I use for German roaches is... is uh, Oh, what is it? What is this stuff? Now, I can't remember. 
that's in the uh, Vendetta, Nygaard, I do use that. That works. Because it's in Vendetta. That's the only IGR I use. But I've had really good results with Nygaard. I haven't had very good results with other IGRs. When they first came out with IGRs, it was funny. The, the uh, joke going around here was that uh, the problem with the IGR, it's an insect growth regulator. And you try to explain it to your customer. I said, it's like birth control for cockroaches. But you can't get the males to use it. So it doesn't work. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the broadcast for fleas. I, 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 I like flea treatments, but they itch me awful. See, I, I, it's funny. I had a customer the other day. She actually said, uh, I went to her house and she's watched my YouTube channel. And she said, what kind of person really enjoys pest control? And I said, well... I've made a, a career out of it. I've done it for 30 years of my life. Uh, I'd have to like it to still be doing it. And I actually enjoy pest control. I, I think it's fun. I, 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 uh, I told my wife, I said that it's people always talk about having a job that they love and they want to do what they love. And I love pest control. I, I, I wouldn't do anything but pest control. So we save lives, honestly. People laugh and they, they think, oh, how do you, but really, honestly, we do. So just like doctors, but then we're, we're hired by the same people. If you think of Bear and uh, <laughs> the same people are paying us, paying doctors too. <laughs> uh, Tempered Nygaard and Tengard and a BNG and it knocks roaches. Well, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I like knockdown. Quick knockdown's good. I like, I like going into an infested house with, I like going into a house where they'll tell you we haven't seen very many roaches at all and then when you're leaving they're raining off the ceiling and they're telling you i had no idea they were that bad you know but they're coming out because you've done you use flushing agent and you've done chased them out of every little crack and crevice and they're just raining out of the woodwork it's crazy just how many bugs can live in your house if people don't realize, just, I mean, they, houses can be totally, completely infested with all kinds of bugs, and they don't even know it until after the pest control guy's been there. There have been houses, I got fired from a job one time. It was one of my first sales. I was just a kid, to teenager, 18, 19 maybe. It was the very first sale. I thought I had, I sold a, a year contract. I was all proud of myself. I went out to the guy's house. And he had uh, he had a problem with spiders, and he wanted me to treat his crawl space. Now he had roaches and stuff in the crawl. He had Oriental cockroaches in his crawl space. He had crickets and stuff too. And I said, well, you know, I don't usually treat a crawl space, and it was tight. It was maybe about that much space under the house, maybe about eh, two feet, maybe. And so I went up under the house and I started treating around with. Uh, pesticide under the house he called back that night and said that i had infested his house with cockroaches that he was canceling the service and i told him then that if i treated his crawl space it was going to chase all that stuff up into his house and uh so i lost my first sale i ever made and so <laughs> because i did told I, I mean it happened exactly the way i told him what happened happened and then he fired me um i'm Three hours from D.C., frugal. I, I go statewide for bed bugs, so I do travel to D.C. I've got a listing in D.C. I've got a listing in uh, Winchester. I have a listing in, let's see, where else? I'm all over Virginia, and uh, I've got several listings all over Virginia, and that's just for my bed bug service because I go statewide for bed bugs. I, I travel as far as it takes to get rid of bed bugs. I hate bed bugs. I enjoy killing bed bugs. I mean, that's, I mean, look at the channel. I mean, it's the bed bug show. I like killing bed bugs. I like talking about bed bugs. I like killing bed bugs. I, I really, I hate, I hate bed bugs. So, you know, everybody's got their thing. One thing I learned when I used to sell pest control all the time, I mean, I still do, but, uh, is you, you have to find out what your customer really dislikes. Do they dislike spiders? Do they dislike, you know, rats? Do they not like, you know, what is the thing that really irks them? And bed bugs is my thing. I really hate bed bugs. So.
One guy told me he actually fumigated his childhood home for German roaches. Cost him thousands. That's true. I had a lady one time. I went to her house, and I treated for German cockroaches. They were really bad cockroaches. And she said in three weeks, she spent over $400. And I'm not that expensive. And I said, you could have paid for have me for at least six months and probably spent maybe a little more than $400, maybe less. I said, then, uh, and you would have had a licensed professional that's, you know, insured and everything in your house doing it for you. And you wouldn't even have to lift a finger and pay me to do it. I'd bring my own chemicals. You wouldn't even have to buy anything. Just have me come in. She was really happy when I got rid of her roaches. I got rid of her roaches. It only took four months to get rid of hers. So, um... Do you ever go to Montgomery County? I don't go into Maryland or uh, anywhere. I don't go anywhere out of state. I go If I go out of state, it's because I'm on vacation. But I don't treat out of state. Like, you know, up in West Virginia, Maryland, uh, Kentucky, Tennessee, uh, North Carolina. You know, any of the states you can actually get reciprocal license from Virginia. I don't have one. I just service Virginia. I've got enough work on my plate with my YouTube channel and, you know, running my own business. I don't have time to go out of state. Maybe one day, but not today. So I have people call from Maryland all the time that want me to go into Maryland because I'm listed in D.C. And they think because I'm listed in D.C., I must have reciprocal to go up into Maryland, but I don't. I don't have one up there, so I don't go into Maryland. So I don't go into D.C. either. D.C. license is outrageous. I don't, I don't apply anything in D.C. I just I go in Arlington, you know, because that's Virginia. Uh, Chesapeake Bay, you know, around those areas, I'll treat if people call with, with, uh, uh, the only, the only far as I've ever been North is, uh, Falls Church, which is like 20 minutes from DC. So that's as far as I've been, but yeah, three hours one way. The thing about bed bugs, when you're not doing, when you're using liquid insecticide for bed bugs, you're going to expect to have to go back. Um, and that's no matter how bad they are, no matter how, you know, how light of an infestation. I advise my customers to do three months of service. If I've got to go to D.C. for three hours one way, that's six hour round trip. That's 18 hours of driving. Because you figure three visits. That's 18 hours just in the car. That's almost a day that I'm not getting paid anything for driving. I don't charge to drive. That's the thing. I don't charge my hours I'm in the car. I probably should, but I don't. I just charge mileage plus my local fee. So whatever it costs local, and then I'm plus mileage. So. Yeah, I don't like traffic. I hate D.C. My father-in-law, this is some kind of grim news a little bit. He's not dead, but he had a heart attack back in March of last year. And he went to the VA up in D.C. And uh, my wife went up there to visit him while he was in the hospital. And uh, I told her, because I went up to babysit. I had to work. I had a couple of days I had to work before I could actually go and join her up in D.C. Because I went with her up in D.C. I uh, joined her up there. And I said, there's no way I'm driving in D.C. First day. I go up. I'm on my way up there. I go and pick up my kids from her uh, grandmother's house. I go and pick up the kids. I actually met them at like a, what is that game they play now? What is that game? Lacrosse. They, lacrosse. Yeah. I don't understand lacrosse. Yeah. But anyway, kids playing lacrosse, I go and pick up my kids at the lacrosse game. And the first thing my wife does is call me and said, oh, by the way, we're having dinner at D.C. at the hospital with Dad. So I had to drive in D.C. I had to drive in D.C. traffic. I'm used to rural, like Lynchburg, Charlottesville, Bedford, where, you know, it takes you 10 minutes to get to your neighbor's house. And then I go to D.C. and it takes you 10 minutes to get one block. That's miserable. That's awful. And the one thing about D.C. is every single person who drives in D.C., if you drive in D.C., it is the law in the District of Columbia to replace your blinker switch 
with a horn because they use their horn as much as they use their blinker in DC. They don't use blinkers in DC. So you hear the honk, you better get out the way because someone's going to run you over. I can't stand driving in DC traffic. I hate it. I hate it. Oh, I hate it. But no, I do charge for mileage, landlord. I do. I have to. I can't afford not to. I don't charge the hours I'm in the car, but I charge mileage. I can't afford not to charge mileage. That's a big hit on the business, and you don't you don't make any money at all. You can't even make any profit whatsoever. And you got to make a living. You're in business to make a living, not you know just to give it away for free. I can't afford to give it away for free. I'm trying my best to help people where I can locally anyway, but. You know, with lower income and stuff like that, because it's local, I can handle it. But if I had to drive to D.C., there's no way I could afford to do that. Not free. I can't do it. I charge a base rate. So even if it's like, that, that's a good idea, though, Greg. With 3,600 square feet, that's a lot of space. That's actually a lot of space for that price. That's not bad. So... You figure if it's a, uh, because, you know, typically what I do is I ask somebody, how many bedrooms do you have? And they'll, a lot of times it's two. If it's two bedrooms, I'm like, ah, it's this much. I don't even worry about square footage. If it's just a two bedroom, you know, it's only going to be. The thing about treating with Crossfire is you have to lift the bed. You have to lift the box spring. Everything else is easy. But you're going to have to do heavy lifting. And so if I'm lifting beds and box springs, I know if it's two bedrooms, I'm going to at least have a couch, uh, maybe a king-size bed at most, and probably a double bed, maybe a twin bed or two twin beds. That's a lot of lifting by itself. Just one king bed is a lot of lifting. And so uh, I just figure how much is it worth for me to go in there and spend an hour and a half, two hours moving somebody's furniture. So that's how I base my rates. I don't. Uh, I do everything. I just, I mean, I do, I do trapping. I do bed bugs. I do whatever my customers want. I do it all. I offer everything. So, and I, I do bed bugs at a really cheap rate for regular customers too. If someone is my regular customer and I've known them for a year or so and I've been coming to their house and I've been spraying their house and they go to like the beach and they bring bed bugs in their house. I don't charge them a whole bunch extra. I just get, I just say, well, typically I charge them like a hundred bucks and I'll lift their bed and treat their beds because I'm already treating the house. And the only thing that I'm going to have to do extra is just treat the bed with Crossfire or Alpine or something. Then I can do that and it keeps them from getting infested. And so I'll do that because that saves me a lot of work. Because if I have to come back and turn the whole house upside down, then, you know, that's a lot more work on me. So if I'm already there, I, I'll give them, you know, one, two hundred dollars and I'll do it, you know, and that's just because of the labor involved in lifting the beds. Um, but I don't mind bed bugs. I like bed bugs, you know, I like doing bed bugs. I hate the bed bugs themselves. They kind of gross me out, but I hate them. So I like to kill them. I enjoy getting rid of them. I'd like to visit Los Angeles. One day I'm going to. Actually, we're planning that trip out west. I don't know if we're going to make it that far or not. But we were thinking about trying to make it to California. I want some pizza. My daughter's eating pizza. We had pizza earlier tonight, and she's eating some now. What time is it? It's 11 o'clock. That child should be in bed. <laughs> but here I am on a live stream. Everybody's awake. What is, what is that? Let's see here. See, I, I don't have my chat. I'm just reading it. I really should be reading it real time because then I can actually ask answer questions quicker. <clears throat> oh, the rodent bait. No. Mm -mm. No, I use I use uh weather block. That's what I use. Let's see in Virginia. Brodificoium hasn't been made uh, restricted use here yet. So they're talking about it, but it hasn't been made restricted use yet. So that's what I use. I use um, weather block. It's really good. I've, I've never had a problem with it. Mice always take it. 
Rats don't always take it, but they eventually take it. And so I've had I've just excellent results. Excellent results. It's all I've ever used. 30 years I've always ever used it. I've never had a problem where I couldn't get rid of rodents with uh, weather block. It's it's really 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 good. So I don't I haven't tried anything. If they stop taking it, then I might try something else, but for right now, I if it didn't broke, don't fix it. I'm having really good results. So If y'all know what weather block is, See if I can get a picture. Is that who makes weather block? Is that Bell Labs? Oh, there it is. There it is. It's Syngenta. Syngenta makes weather block. Um, like here. Let me share my. Ah, I just got a Charlie horse. Oh, I didn't have one of those in years. Oh, that's painful. Ugh. That's really painful. All right, let me see here. Add. Let me share my. There it is. Weather block. That's what I use. And now I can't see my chat at all. So, but that's Syngenta. That's who makes weather block. Man, that really hurts. Oh, that Charlie horse was awful. So, but yeah, that's not Bill Labs that makes that. But that's Bradificoium is what the active ingredient is in that. Unless they're the ones that invented the chemical, I don't know. Maybe they did. I have never been able to get the mice to take the contract sulfate. You know those little throw packets? They're like the little rings. I have never been able to get them to eat it. They just will not eat it. I, I got some like free samples at one of those, you know, they gave me like a whole bag of them. And I, they just rotted. They just would not eat them, would not go after them in the bait stations. Um, the throw packs and stuff, couldn't get them to eat it. They just didn't want it. So I tried it, you know, but I've never been able to get the mice to eat it. No, that's actually weather block. XT. It's name. That's that's actually the exact bucket I have in my car right now. Is that bucket? So, but there, uh, it's good stuff. But you have to use it in a bait station. You can use it in the burrows itself, but you have to cover the burrows. You know, like rat burrows and stuff, where they'll go in like around a stump or somewhere like that. You can use it there, but you can't use it. You can't just toss it around. It's loose, loose bait, which most bait you can't do that with. And uh, so you have to put it in bait stations, rat bait stations, mouse bait stations. And, uh, but that, I always advise doing that anyway and keeping it up away from kids and pets and where, uh, you know, dogs will chew anything. I'm, I don't trust them. You know, they'll say that they're pet proof and the pets, I still keep them up away from pets because I don't, I know my dog can chew through anything. And so I don't, I don't put the bait stations down around where cats or dogs or anybody can get a hold of it. But the thing I like about the weather block is because, uh, it's it's it dries them up so there's not any odor and so if a mouse dies in like the wall or crawl space or attic they don't stink up the whole house um you know a lot of the bait because it's it's a uh they have to they die pretty quick uh especially with like zinc phosphide a lot of people like to use zinc phosphide tracking powder and stuff like that i don't use that at all and uh it's just like they die really fast and then they stink forever. So, and my customers, they don't want, they don't want nothing smelling up in their house. Yeah. Well, I'll try. I mean, maybe I, I'll go try the contract one day. If, if I, if weather block quits working, I have no problem 
you know, trying new things. I try new things all the time. I was really leery about trying Crossfire. Uh, actually, the salesman that sold me, actually didn't sell me. He sold a friend of mine, another exterminator I know. And he told him that, uh, now this was a salesman pitch. I don't know if there's any truth to it or not. But the guy told me that Crossfire, people were giving year guarantees with Crossfire after applying it after three months. They were guaranteeing it for a year. I find that hard to believe, but they were claiming they were finding residuals up to a year later with Crossfire. And so I tried it, and it's worked really good. I have not had one instance yet where bed bugs were immune to it. I've had people claiming on like my channel and stuff. So I tried Crossfire and it was crap. And then I asked them about it and they find out they're just using the little aerosol and uh, that's not going to do anything. And so, you know, a lot of people are complaining about Crossfire, but they're not, I don't think they're mixing it properly and I don't think they're applying it properly, which is why they're not getting the results they want. And it does take a couple of treatments before you get rid of the bed bugs with Crossfire, but it does work. I've had really good results with it working. So I'm, I mean, I'm not going to give a year guarantee because I'm not going to guarantee something you can pick up at your neighbor's house or at the library or at the movies, you know, and bring them back in your house. So I don't guarantee bed bugs, but, you know. I saw another episode rerun of Infested by Animal Planet. They had an episode on ticks. What were those ticks that infested that house? And did you ever deal with them? Ticks? I had a lady that infested her house with ticks one time. Oh, I've, I ever once, once it ever happened. It was just deer ticks. But um, it was seed ticks and deer ticks. And she infested her whole basement. What happened, it was when Frontline was first introduced years ago, long time ago. Uh, and actually, I believe Frontline was introduced before Termidor, I think. It was Fipper Nils, the active ingredient in Frontline. But uh, her dogs were picking up the ticks out in the yard where the deer were grazing in her yard. She, the dogs were going out and laying down where the deer would bed during the night, and they were picking up the ticks, and they were bringing them in the house, and the ticks weren't actually biting the dog. They were falling off in the house. And then the ticks started breeding in the basement off of her house cats that weren't treated with Frontline. And so they were breeding off the cats, falling all over the floor. She had thousands of ticks all over her basement. It was crazy. And I've ne that's the only time I've ever seen it. I haven't seen it since. And that was, like I said, back when Frontline was first introduced, I was just, shoot, I was, hmm, excuse me, I was probably like, what, 2000? Year 2000, 1999, 2000, 2001, something like that is when that happened. <coughs> but I'm, like I said, MGK, that's who makes Crossfire. So, you know, the thing about, I'm, I'm just, I'm really, I, do, I have a video on my channel about, 90 day warranties. A lot of exterminators, I don't know if any of you guys offer this or not, but a lot of exterminators will go out and they'll do an initial on cockroaches and they'll give a 90 day warranty. And they'll say, if you have any roaches in that 90 day period, I'll come back and I'll treat for free. And they're getting a, a high price. Actually here, it's like somewhere close to $300 for one treatment. All right. The thing is with the way that the, uh, with the way that the pricing works locally here, for $300, I could do, let's see, four treatments, maybe more, around that, uh, once a month, and you're not getting one treatment and then 90-day follow-up, uh, which you have to pay for after 90 days, of course, because they're only given a 90-day guarantee. And the problem with that is, yeah, the chemical may say that it lasts for 90 days, but does it kill bugs for 90 days? Well, yeah, it may be. But does it kill them quick enough? You know, one of the biggest problems with roaches and with fleas, fleas especially, is if they can lay eggs and the eggs can lay dormant and they don't hatch right away, you have reinfestation after 90 days. And so, and that's with fleas, you can have reinfestation up to a month later and after the chemical is no longer effective. 
So the biggest problem with, yes, you may be able to find a chemical residual. Yes, it may still be, be killing bugs. But the problem is, is that if it's not killing them before they can reproduce, then what good are you doing? You know, yeah, they may die, but, you know, people die from old age, too, eventually. You know, and bugs, if they're getting into the pesticide and they're dying after they've already laid eggs, well, then you've got offspring. And then they're going to grow up. They're going to die after they have eggs. And so eventually the chemical is no longer going to be effective. And it's not going to kill anything. And it's and, and you're going to start breeding chemical resistant bugs because the less the less effective the chemical becomes, the more likely with especially with German roaches, the more likely you're going to have offspring that are genetically immune to the chemical. And then you're not going to kill them at all. So, you know, doing like a one time treatment and then guaranteeing the treatment and then it's just going to get weaker and weaker and weaker. You're only setting yourself up for failure in the future. Because eventually you're going to have to go back and you're not going to be able to kill them at all because the chemical just gets weaker and weaker and weaker. It's better to go on a monthly basis and continuously reapply a stronger, you know, a strong dose that, you know, once once you apply it, it's going to immediately start breaking down. So you apply it, you come back in 30 days, you apply again, you always have a strong enough residual there that's going to kill the bugs before they can reproduce. You have to break the life cycle of the bug you're dealing with, whether it's spiders, whether it's, you know, fleas, roaches, bed bugs, any of those. You've got to break the life cycle. You've got to kill them before they can have babies. Because as soon as they start having babies in the pesticide, those babies are going to start getting immune to that pesticide. And then you're not going to be able to kill them at all. And people are the same way. You know, people will take a medication and like, especially with, um, like allergy medication, like uh, people get immune to that Claritin all the time and they have to take that, whatever that other stuff is for, you know, their, you know, whatever, their uh, allergies. And so bugs are the same way. They develop immunities to the pesticides, just like we develop immunity to, you know, medicine. <sighs> well, it's been over an hour. Wow. I got talking. Talking and talking and talking. Running my mouth. All I ever do is run my mouth. So, if there's any questions, uh, shoot me one real quick. Otherwise, I'm going to call it a night. I am exhausted. I moved an entire bedroom suit today. I had a dresser that weighed 285 pounds, had my son who's 13, who's built like a workhorse, help me. <laughs> I had to have help. So uh, I'm sore and I'm ready to go to bed. So if anybody has any questions, uh, otherwise I will see you next week on Friday next week because, you know, I do this every Friday. So, and enjoy your Super Bowl. Who's playing the Super Bowl? Who's watching the Super Bowl this weekend? I'm not sure who's playing. I, I, I thought it was the, uh, what was it, the Patriots? And the Eagles. All I know is Justin Timberlake's playing at halftime. Yeah, and my wife says all she knows is Justin Timberlake's a halftime show. Should I? I ain't free. It's just Justin Timberlake. What? Nothing. Nothing. They can hear me. You you, you don't have to listen. <laughs> I think it's the Eagles and the uh, Patriots. So the Patriots are probably going to win. I'm going to make people mad now. I tell them the Patriots are going to win. And then they'll get mad at me. <laughs> yeah, new, new England Patriots of the Philadelphia Eagles. I tell you, that's a city I didn't like was Philadelphia. But anyway, I visited there last year. All right, y'all. Well, I'm going to get on to bed. Hopefully get over this cold. So, uh, oh, yeah, too political. Shoot, I don't like football or politics. My wife loves politics. I just... Oh, 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 it's, 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 it's miserable. I tell you, it's like watching Survivor. I don't like that either. <laughs> it's seriously, it's like the best reality television show in the world. And it's like, but you know, you got a reality superstar. Isn't, isn't that what Trump, isn't he a reality? He's a reality star. He yeah. was, he had the, the apprentice, the third, you know? I don't know. George W. Bush was pretty hilarious to watch. Oh show. yeah, he was. Yeah, he was fun. So. I liked Bill Clinton because he's the only one I can really impersonate really well. It was Bill Clinton. So. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> anyway. Ah. <sighs> All right, Westwood. Well, you guys have a great night. I really appreciate you showing up tonight. Thank you, David, again for your $2 donation. I really appreciate it. And uh, like I said, visit over on my Patreon. I'll put it in my description below. Y'all guys can check it out if you want to. And uh, I'll be talking to you guys later. Thanks.